This block is killing me. We have got to figure out how to get this pig out of the Aleutians and move it to some other location. Otherwise, we are just going to see round after round of ensemble suite after ensemble suite show these bright red colors over the United States. And I am just about sick of it. And winter hasn't even officially started yet calendar wise. There are other ways to get winter weather for parts of the lower 48. And we're going to take a look at a couple of those scenarios that some of the operational runs, the deterministic models are spitting out. And I will explain it all to you here in just a moment. In the meantime, if you've got any good ideas on how to get rid of this thing, let's put our heads together and figure it out so that we can get into January and rolling strong. Otherwise, we're gonna be looking at this mess for the next two weeks and I don't want to see it. Okay, there we go, got that out of the way. This is the 500 millibar pattern that you're all too familiar with if you have been watching this show and bright reds or oranges or a warm colors usually associated with warm temperatures at the surface and of course these dark greens and blues indicate cold air at the surface. These are polar vortex lobes or troughs depending on how they are set up and where they are. In any event Canada is very very cold. Some of the portions of uh, south central Canada will be warming up a little bit but predominantly it's going to stay cold and there's your flow pattern and look what this flow pattern kind of looks like sort of like a little omega block kind of deal that's pretty stable that's sitting up here and eventually we're going to see rain directed into the pacific northwest this week it's actually starting and it will continue for the foreseeable future okay so here's what happens with this as we go on out of time this is the european ensemble mean and as we see here it comes a trough coming into the united states as we get toward midweek there is your flow. Look at this. You can tell the height lines where they're tightly packed here. This is the flow, okay? And this is your jet stream, sort of. And it's bringing temp uh, storm system after storm system to the Pacific Northwest that is setting up shop there. And we have this big trough working through the center portion of the country that will dip into the Tennessee Valley into the east as we head pro approach next weekend. And it will bring another blast of Arctic air across the Midwest, the Great Lakes in the Northeast, and the upper southeast parts of the Ohio Valley as well, and Tennessee Valley. Be a quick hitter in and out. But again, the ensemble mean out in time where we see all those red colors it doesn't do a great job in picking up these individual sort of uh, events and uh, as we move in we start to see those show up on the ensemble mean and as we go way on out of time look at this and we just get this big return of the bright reds that Aleutian block stays in place big trough off the west coast and negative PNA rages on neg uh, positive NAO positive Arctic oscillation just couldn't hardly draw up a worse pattern for warm weather for much of the United States States. Fortunately, uh, there are ways to cool some of us off the Pacific Northwest. You'll eventually get cool across the northern tier. High pressure uh, will direct cool air enough. Canada at the surface. Canada stays cold predominantly. The Northeast is going to stay predominantly cold as the ridge axis is in the center of the country. And there will be wedging opportunities for those of us in the upper southeast and north east of the apps okay so that's what's going to happen this is the sort of the favored pattern as we go through the next week or two look at this you got a big Aleutian uh, ridge here just sitting in place you've got another sort of Scandinavian ridge maybe poking into Greenland a little bit and that's a pretty stable pattern we're gonna have to shake that up maybe that NAO can really get going but out over time we go two weeks out and we're still seeing this massive mega ridge from uh, the Baja of California all the way up into um, Iceland and so that's just not a great pattern for big winter storms along the east coast or central portion of the country or any place else outside of the pacific northwest and the mountain ranges out of there okay so i spent a few minutes on that i wanted to show you the pattern this has been stable all the ensemble suites pretty much have this i think what we're seeing here on the european is bogus i think what we're going to end up seeing is a pattern that looks a little bit more like this maybe not to that extreme but uh, you're going to see uh, troughing off the west coast up through canada keeping canada cold and then back through the northeast and i think the model is going a little too far with its big connecting ridge there and so this will see high pressure slide out of Canada across the north and into the east as we go out in time okay there is that that's your big picture view here is the GFS operational run please don't tell me in the comments that I'm cherry picking the GFS operational run and I'm trying to forecast two weeks out based on this because I am not what I'm doing here is making a point okay this is just just illustrative purposes all right 
show you how we can stay chilly across the north and get some snow across the north and maybe even a winter storm or two in the east if things time out just right. You watch the GFS, you get these low pressures coming across the northern tier like we have seen in this pattern that has been set up. High pressure follows these storms bringing cold air down. This is that trough working in. We're going to see a thunderstorm, a line of thunderstorms, potentially uh, not severe, anything looking severe, anything, but to certainly a line of showers, maybe some thunder along it as we go into uh, Thursday night, Thursday um, evening, Thursday night, and heading into Friday morning. And you'll get some snow in the higher elevations out here, but high pressure dominates behind this as we head into the weekend with a big cool shot of Arctic air. Now look what happens. Keep your eyes on the Pacific Northwest. You see a lot of rain out here. This is just continuing to happen and uh, as storm systems move into that portion of the country and you'll see the snow levels falling through the week as we get on out to the east into the Rockies and the Colorado Rockies, you'll start to see some snow eventually out in time as well. But um, uh, you see these storm systems, storm systems can't talk, move across the border, high pressure follows, so cool air following the storms, getting across the northern tier, bringing snow into the northeast. Occasionally we'll see light snow showers from time to time. In the lee of the lakes, you'll see uh, the winds kind of blowing out of the west and so those snow bands will set up occasionally as well. And look at this, the GFS times a wave moving across the center of the country, getting into the mid-Atlantic with a high pressure, bringing cold air at the surface. And we know winds flow uh, clockwise around these highs and you get these little pieces of low pressure coming through, bringing in moisture and uh, you can time the moisture and the uh, cool air up for a significant, moderate to significant quick hitting a winter storm here it would be significant down in the southeast if we saw icing. And uh, so keep in mind that even though you don't necessarily have a pattern that's favorable for winter storms, you can still get winter storms if things time out just right. This is not a completely hostile pattern that just favors wall-to-wall -wall warmth across the country and it's a blowtorch and there's no cold in Canada. There's a lot of cold up there and all it takes is a little bit of a buckle in the jet to dip into that, tap into it and bring it down and time it up with this active pattern that we're in. So you understand that? You understand what I'm saying here? I'm not saying that we're going to have an ice storm the middle of next week, but we could see a few winter storms pop up as we go out through the uh, two-week period. There comes another high pressure in, another system across the north bringing some snow in. This is not to be taken verbatim, but this is the pattern. System scooting across the north, high pressure coming in after them. Any type of buckling allows the storm track to dip a little farther to the south, but the west coast continues to stay wet. There it is, and here is your satellite picture. Look at this, just a big, big feed of tropical moisture in here. Look at this coming all the way from Hawaii, south of Hawaii and the north, or actually north of Hawaii. There's Hawaii down here. Uh, bring in that moisture from way out in the Pacific. That is the Pineapple Express, the atmospheric river, whatever you want to call it. It is just pointed and has its sights set right here. You're in the bullseye in the Pacific Northwest, California. You're going to get on the action too. Just how much are we going to see here? Well, if we take a look over the course of the next two weeks, look at this big time rainfall totals out here. We're, we're talking 12 to as much as 20 inches in some of these higher peaks of uh, precipitation. Some of that will be eventually in the form of snow, but you're going to see a lot of snowfall eventually over the course of two week period and a lot of rainfall as well. Some of the valleys and places like Seattle and back into um, uh, Spokane, not quite as much over here, but between the mountain ranges, Portland, you're going to see you know six inches of rain out of this when it's all said and done. So much, much more rain. There's your snowfall totals. Look at this, well over two feet in the Cascades and uh, parts of the Rockies as well, heading on down into the um, you know, Idaho and Bitterroots and over here into western Wyoming and down into the Colorado Rockies. That's a little bit later on in the period where we start to see the western portion or the eastern portions of this all pile up. So that's what we've got going on. A little bit of snow activity with those systems moving across the northern tier, particularly the upstate of New York and on up into northern New England is where that would be favored for any potential snowfall. And then down farther south, we could see that snow or, or some ice uh, situations develop toward the mid-Atlantic upper southeast as we go on out of time. Taking a look at how this runs out over the course of the, this week through Friday, Look at this, two feet up here in the northern Cascades and then back into the Bitterroots and over uh, into the Bighorns. Eventually you'll see some snow over there too. 
and eventually down into Colorado, then we start to really rack up the snow. The ski resort should love this as uh, troughing out here on the west takes hold and we start to work in some colder air into the pattern out there. Now, taking a look at the next uh, few days, we start out here today and uh, move this along as we get on in toward Tuesday morning. Okay, so Tuesday morning, very, very quiet for much of the country outside of the northwest. And then we'll see another little clipper system kind of move north of the border, maybe bring a few light snow showers into New England. But our next system takes place toward the end of the week, middle and end of the week. We get on it here toward Thursday morning. Plenty of moisture out here in the plains and uh, the uh, Mississippi Valley. We're starting to see that line of showers form. Be really windy out here in uh, parts of the north, uh, northern plains into the Midwest too as we get on in toward the weekend. And uh, by the time we get into Friday morning, that line of showers is pushing well into the east. Uh, exiting the coast by the time we get into Friday afternoon. And so we're just left with westerly flow and lake effect snows and another system moving in out here into the west, bringing snow to the Rockies and more rain into the Pacific Northwest. Looking at today, we're looking at several advisories in place. Those cold air advisories are gone because the Arctic air mass is heading out quickly. We've got wind advisories, high wind watches, and high wind warnings. We're going to see gusts up here in the 50s and maybe in some 60s in spots as well over the next couple of days as those systems crash into the west coast and strengthen. And um, there's your temperatures for tonight. Look at this. Lows in the teens. Some single digits definitely possible up here across the Great Lakes into the northeast, freezing all the way down to the Gulf Coast to Florida. You're escaping that and uh, South Texas as well and over here along the West Coast but uh, not nearly as cold as it was if we look at temperatures tomorrow the only cold spots up here in the Northeast where we won't get above freezing but much of the rest of the nation warming up particularly in the plains and across the south and if we take a look at Wednesday it warms up even further 50s and 60s across the south approaching 70s even 80s across uh, portions of Florida and in relatively warm for this time of year up there in the Midwest and plains as well but that next front will come through and deliver another blast of Arctic air highs below zero uh, highs in the single digits Again, maybe some sections below zero up in northern North Dakota. Very, very warm above 80, South Texas, South Florida. So it is going to be very warm. And then Friday, cooling off as that front plows through, but temperatures are not going to plunge like they have been. It will get cooler, but not drastically cold as we head into the day on Friday. And then warming back up in the plains. Wash, rinse, repeat. And there you have it. Now, taking a look at some of our uh, variables in the atmosphere, these are some of the indexes that we monitor. MJO is still hanging out in the null phase down here, very, very low amplitude, not having much effect on the patterns forecast by most models to emerge in phase eight, play around over here on the cold side of the diagram, although there are some mixed signals with the actual convection in the tropics itself. There are some uh, additional bursts of tropical convection out over near and around India and uh, uh, Indonesia and places like that. And so that's, you know, not favorable for tropical forcing in terms of affecting the pattern to help it, the, 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 the features in the atmosphere realign for cold. So we're seeing sort of a, a opposing process going on in the tropics. But the diagram shows the pulse to be in phase eight, which is way better than it showing the pulse to be in five, six, four, three, in those places. So we've got that going for us. That is good. This is not good, my friends. And what is not good when you can actually see it? The Arctic Oscillation. This is very, very bad. This is bad. You see this? This is bad. This is why is this bad? Because the Arctic Oscillation is positive. We want it to be down here, not up here. Negative is good. Positive is bad. Okay, you understand that? All right. Now, what's next? What do we have next? We have our PNA. Our PNA is a negative. We want the PNA to be positive. It's not. It's well negative and forecast to stay negative for the next two weeks. The Arctic Oscillation is at least forecast to drop toward neutral by the end of the two week period, but the PNA is also very, very bad negative. If you like, cool weather in the center portion of the country or the eastern sections. You, you want this to be positive. It is not. That is a big ridge along the west coast when it's positive. It's a big trough along the west coast when it's negative. What do you get in the east when you get a negative trough or a trough in the west? Ridge in the east. That's how it works. Ridge, trough, ridge, trough. That's the way the atmosphere wants to behave. Well, this is just 
plain bad. It's not very bad. It's just bad. This is the NaO, and you want the NaO to be negative 2. That is down here. This is positive. That creates blocking up near Greenland and suppresses the flow. And there are some signs that this will turn negative uh, toward the end of the two-week period. That is the next logical step. This is also bad. I'm not going to write the word on the screen this time, but trust me, this is bad as well. The polar vortex, the stratospheric polar vortex, is, looks like it's going to strengthen and get above normal strength. The red line is average, and the blue line is the European uh, the ensemble mean over the next four weeks. Okay, so not looking very good for us for a big blockbuster cold outbreak and a sustained cold pattern. You'd want to see continued shots of weakening. And after it gets, we get on in here toward early January, it starts to strengthen. And so we're not assaulting that the way we would. So not a great forecast for a big cold pattern setting up shop for the majority of the United States. The West Coast will eventually cool off. The Northeast probably will stay cool. The Northern Tier will stay variable, but uh, lean in the cool direction and uh, down the east coast of uh, the United States, we could see wedging from time to time to, to keep the heat down and keep temperatures much more respectably near average. And eventually, um, you know, we could see things time out where we get a winter storm or two. And, and, and the models aren't, they've been, as I said before, many times here, they have been showing a lot of warm weather that has just not kind of played out the way they have been showing way out in time. We're seeing a big trough working in this week that wasn't there, you know, a, a long time ago when the models were showing the way far out. It was a big ridge, just a big ridge across the United States. So uh, just because you see a bunch of reds don't mean winter's over, okay? I've told you that before. Don't listen to any of that stuff. Just, um, you know, follow me here. Keep uh, subscribed to the channel and uh, put these videos out every day. If you don't have notifications, turn on, turn, hit the bell, turn the notifications on, set it for a daily reminder, and you'll get a, you'll, you'll, you see when I put the video out, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. I'll cover the stuff every single day and uh, leave me a comment too. Let me know where you're commenting from. If you have any questions, what kind of weather you're seeing, always happy to hear that. And of course, if there's anything I can be in prayer about, please put it in the comments section, okay? We're at 8,000, so we're not quite at 8,000 subscribers yet, still 7,300, but uh, let's get to eight, then nine and 10. I'll be uh, one year in February since I launched this channel. And so would love to get to 10 by then take some big videos to do that and hopefully uh, the word can get out and we can have you to push this out to more people but certainly I appreciate your support and the, those that do watch it and if it never grows to another subscriber at all I appreciate all of you and pray for you every day so uh, that's what we've got going on there now listen last thing I always want to cover the solar stuff there's not a lot going on just a big trans equatorial coronal hole we'll be feeling the effects of that a couple of days so nothing all that much going on with the sun that could put us in minor geomagnetic storm conditions and the only other thing that i wanted to show you and sometimes i don't load this till the end because it takes a lot of resources on the computer but moon phases all right we've got a 15.4 percent waning crescent maybe you could still see a few meteors up there tonight if you look hard enough and then we're going down to a, a new moon december the 19th and check this out uh Let's, let's do this. This is what, not what I wanted to do. Last thing I want to do here is show you the sunrise and sunset chart. And there you have it. We're going to be soon. It's going to be soon. We are going to be gaining a daylight. All right. So we're very, very close. I think it's December the 21st. And so uh, we will be gaining a daylight from there on through next June. All right. So there you have it. That's the show for today. Let me know if you have any questions. I read and respond to all the comments, but I'll be back tomorrow. I've got a family uh, thing going on tomorrow. I've got my son. He's got a doctor appointment all day. And so we'll be having uh, that. And then tomorrow afternoon is probably when I can get to uh, do a video again, but uh, that's it. Hope you have a wonderful day. It's cold rain reminding you weather runs 24 seven, but I got you covered right here, right now, 48, 14. Take care everybody and have a wonderful day and God bless.